Hi, everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. Very much excited for having you uh, on our third session in dealing with ethical issues that the financial accountant or the professional accountant is faced with. In the section one, we consider the issue about the fundamental codes of ethics. So we discussed in detail the issue about integrity, objectivity, professional competence and due care, prof uh, confidentiality, and also spend some time to look at the issue about professional behavior. That was what we did in the part one. Then in the part two, which was yesterday, we looked at the threats that the professional accountant is faced with. And we look at the self-review threats, the self-interest threats, the advocacy threats, the familiarity threats, and also concluded on the issue about the uh, intimidation threats. And you saw the way those things are linked. But then the key question that we need to ask ourselves is, okay, so in the exam hall, if we are presented with, an, uh, with a question on threats, how do we answer that? How do we answer that? So that is what we want to do in this uh, final session on ethical issues. We want to, uh, want to provide you with some blueprints, go through some of the questions with you, explain to you how you can actually answer threat questions so that our ethic, uh, questions relating to ethics. Remember, this is 10 marks in advanced audit and assurance, 10 marks in corporate reporting, five marks between five to 10 in financial reporting, five to 10 in management accounting, strategic case study. It's also going to be there. And then the issue about advanced taxation may or may not be there in that case. So ethics actually cut across in a lot of the subjects. And I see some of you guys joining. You are welcome on the live stream. <coughs> Let's uh, comment in the chat box any questions you have for me, please. Comments below with any questions you have for me, what you will want us to share our thoughts on uh, on the stream. Remember also to give us a thumbs up on the video. It helps us a lot so we can reach as many students as possible on the live stream or watching the playback of the live stream. So give us a thumbs up on the video, share the video, let us reach many students. Now, in case you missed the part one, the part two of this stream, you can check the description of this video on YouTube and you'll be able to watch the part one, the part two, and then also get today's session so you can understand exactly how this goes through. Now, make sure also that, or remember that you can also listen to the audio lectures on various podcast streaming platforms. So wherever you get your podcast from, you can get access to the Insura Premium podcast. So wherever you are, just search for Insura Premium, Spotify, Apple Podcast, um, Public Cast, or sorry, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Google Podcast, Breaker, wherever you are, we are just there and you'll be able to listen to the audio lesson. Now, in case you are listening to the audio lecture also on this platform, consider to subscribe, follow, and give leave us a review on these platforms because these platforms use these uh, engagements to be able to promote all the content so we can reach many students across the continent. So the big question is what we want to answer today, and that is how do we answer questions relating to threats, ethics? So when we go to the exam hall, how is the question going to be, number one? And then how are we going to answer the question? Why, how, how do we go about it? That 10 marks, that five marks, how are we supposed to position ourselves so that we can score that full marks in the exam hall? And that is exactly what we want to look at today and see how we can approach and go through that. That is exactly what we want to look at today. So like I said, if you missed the part one and two, check the description of this video on YouTube. You will be able to uh, watch the part one and two so that you can follow me on the part three very well as we try to put the pieces together. So how do we answer the questions relating to ethics? How do we answer the questions relating to ethics? How do we answer it? That is very, very important. Now, the way we answer the question is that 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, our question is going to be a scenario-based uh, question. So the nature of the question is, is going to be a scenario-based. Okay? So many of the examiner is going to build some stories, tell us some stories, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. So that is the first thing we must understand. It's going to be a scenario-based. Now, the purpose is that now, after we consider or as we read the scenario, we need to be able to identify what is actually happening 
in the scenario. So we need to ask ourselves, what are the issues going on in the scenario? Now, so when you read a scenario, you need to identify what are the issues going on in the scenario. So what is the main issue really going on in the scenario? Now, if you understand the main issue going on in the scenario, sometimes some of the issues have accounting or IFRS treatment. So you need to ask yourself then, how should the IFRS uh, be relating to that particular issue? So I'm going to give you an illustration because not all the issues are going to be uh, IFRS related. Okay. So not all the scenarios that you will be able to fish out any IFRSs, but there are some of the scenarios you need to understand the IFRS treatment of the issue that has been risen as a professional accountant or as you are in the exam hall. So one, our question is going to be a scenario-based question. As we read the scenario, we need to understand what is the issue here. When we identify what the issue is in the scenario, then the next thing we need to ask ourselves is, is there any accounting standard that is applicable here? So for instance, let's say that like the scenario I started with during uh, this whole series and as we began this whole series, uh, one of the scenario that I started with is for instance, let's say that you are the CFO of the company and then the CEO of the company comes and say, you're preparing the financial statement, okay? So you're preparing the financial statement. Let's say you are doing that as a CFO. You're preparing the financial statement and uh, the CEO comes and says, hey, listen, we need to get a financial statement that will enable us to go for a loan from the bank. And we are going for a loan for about $25 million. And the CEO tells you that we need this loan so that we can increase our productivity or our production as an entity, when we get this loan, you as the CFO of the company, there'll be increase in your salary as the CEO of the company. And then if we're able to get this loan, then we as a company, we are not going to downsize. People are not going to be losing their job. So there will not be any uh, job lost. So no job lost. But then there is a specific issue. Because if the, we are going into the bank to go and borrow money, one of the things that the bank will be interested in is the gearing level of the company. Is the company highly geared or not highly geared? In addition to that, certainly the bank will be interested in our interest cover. That is the efficiency and efficiency with which the loan or borrowed funds are used to generate profit of the organization. So the bank will be interested in the gearing level of the entity. The bank will be interested also in the interest cover of the entity. But then you are presented with a transaction. Many of the assets of the company are leased. So there, were a lot, there are a lot of assets of the business that are leased. So they are not owned, they are not purchased by the entity, but they are on lease. Now, if they are on lease, then certainly, you know, as a professional accountant, as a student, that they must be accounted for in accordance with IFRS 16, leases. Now, so let me build a story again so that you understand what is going on. You are the CFO of the company. The CEO of the company has approached you and say, prepare the financial statement. The purpose that you, we want you to prepare the financial statement is that we are going in for a loan at the bank for $25 million dollars. Now, when this loan comes, you as the CFO of the company, you're going to get an increase in your salary. Okay, then uh, there will be increase in the production of the entity, meaning the company will make a lot of profit. When that $25 million come also, we as a company, we were not going to be downsizing. And so there will not be any job lost to anybody else. Now, the bank is interested in two things. Number one, the jerry level of our company and then the interest cover of our company. This is the issue we have at hand. This is the purpose of the uh, loan that we are going in for and how the CEO wants us to go about it. But many of the assets of the company are on leased basis. And so quickly, as you are reading the question and you get to that point, you must understand that, okay, if many of the assets are on lease basis, that means IFRS 16 has to apply leases. 
Now, if IFRS 16 is going to be applying, then what is going to be happening is that in accordance with IFRS 16, the lease must be categorized into current liability and non-current liability. This is as per IFRS 16. This will enhance faithful representation of the financial statement, and this will present honest financial statements to the users of the financial statement. But then this is what the CEO is telling you. The CEO says that do not recognize any non-current liability in respect of the leased properties. Do not recognize any non-current liability in relation to the assets that has been leased. Why is that? Because if the non-current liability is recognized in respect of the lease, that may be factored into or taken into consideration when calculating the gearing level of the company. For that reason, the entity becomes highly geared. So based on that, your CEO tells you that, hey, please do not recognize the lease as a non-current liability. Recognize all the liabilities in relation to the lease as a current liability so that our gearing position will be reduced, will be reduced. So this is the fact of the case. So you realize that everything that I'm going for is going to be the first one. It's a scenario base. I'm telling you a story. So you see that right now, I just weaved a case for you. Okay, so our question is going to be a, a scenario base. Our question on ethics in the exam hall is going to be a scenario based. That's the first thing we need to understand. Once the question is a, a, a scenario-based question, the second thing we need to understand is what is the issue represented in the question? What, what are the issues represented in the question? Okay, so if you look at the scenario that I just built up, the issue in the question is that the company is going in for a loan. So the company needs a loan. Now, the loan is dependent on the preparation of financial statement in a certain manner and for that reason the ceo is recommending that the lease should be accounted for as current liability and not splitted between current and non-current so that is the issue then also the loan must be brought because if the loan is brought you as the CFO gets increase in salary, the company as a whole increase in profitability, and for that reason, there will not be downsizing or loss of jobs. This is the issue happening. Now, because of the nature of this story I just weaved, or this story I just told you, you realize that there is an, an IFRS reference here. So the question you need to ask yourself is, what is the IFRS reference here? So in my scenario, you realize that there is an IFRS reference of IFRS 16 leases. Because the lease must be accounted for as per IFRS 16, not as per the directives of the CEO of the company. So number one, our question is going to be on a scenario base. Number two, we must, as we read the question, we must understand the issue that are significant, that are critical in the question. And then number three, we must assess, is there any IFRS treatment that we are supposed to be aware of, that we are supposed to know about? We need to know that. We need to know that. Then from there, we need to then identify the threats that are represented in the question. So when I go back to my scenario here, what are some of the threats do you think uh, this accountant or you as a CFO, you're gonna be exposed to? Now remember, there is a self-interest threat. Why? Because of the promise of the salary increment that is gonna be happening there. So there is a self-interest threat. Okay, so I, I'm going to start thinking about that. There's a self-interest threat. Not only that, uh, we are told that if we don't represent the financial statement in that manner, there could be downsizing. So the question then is, can you bear, can you carry on your head the guilt that your quote-unquote righteousness, your quote-unquote adherence to the regulatory framework for financial reporting, your quote-unquote holiness, 
cause has caused people to lose their job. Can you bear that? Uh, how do we call it? Can you bear that conscience as an individual? So you realize that that is going to give you some undue influence. So there is going to be some issue about intimidation threats. There's going to be some issue about intimidation threats. So you realize that as per the case of the matter, you face with a self-interest threat. You face with an intimidation threat. There is nothing about self-review here. There is nothing about advocacy here. Then there is nothing about familiarity really close here. Even though, yeah, you work with your boss, da 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 really the two key issues here will be these threats. So as you read your scenario, understand the issue. If there is any IFRSs, know about it and understand why this, this, how the thing is supposed to be treated and what the, the person is being asked to do so that you can write out your solution properly. Then you identify the threat. Immediately you identify the threat, you should be able to link the threat to the fundamental code of ethics that is being breached. You must link it to the fundamental code of ethics that is being breached in the scenario. Okay? So if, you, if I go back to my scenario here, what is happening here? Now, listen to me carefully. You realize that the CFO is going to be exposed to a self-interest threat and then self-review threat. How does this affect the professional accountant? It is going to affect the objectivity of the professional accountant. Why? Because the threat of loss of job of others and then the success of the company dependent on the loan is going to be an undue influence. There could be some there will be some level of force that is going to be on you that will affect your professional judgment. Because of that, you will be preparing financial statements that may be misleading to the bankers. Hence, that is going to be leading into the issue about integrity. So you may be preparing misleading financial statements. Now, because you're likely to prepare misleading financial statements, it means you won't adhere to the legal or the regulatory framework for the preparation of financial statements. Hence, there is some issue about professional due care. Not competence, not that you don't know, because competence is when you don't know, but due care is when you don't follow the right procedure, the right uh, thought on how things are supposed to be done. So the threats that you are exposed to now will cause you to, uh, your, for your judgment to be influenced, will cause you to prepare misleading financial statements, integrity, and will cause you not to... Uh, uh, carry out or prepare the financial statement in the manner that you expected to carry it out. So that is professional due care. Now, certainly overall, this could affect your professional behavior as a CFO. As a CFO. Because if you're going to be providing misleading financial statement to the bank, and the bank relies on your financial statement and gives a loan to the company, if something goes wrong, you are likely to be arrested. You are likely to have issues. You are likely to be called on at the end of the day. So that is what we are talking about here. Our ethics question is going to be a scenario base. As we read the scenario, we must understand what is the issue in the scenario. There are certain scenarios, there are some IFRSs in them, we must know what are the treatments? What are the issues in the IFRS treatment? Then you must identify what threats, what ethical dilemma is the person exposed to. So the, the, the issue about the threat and linking it to the code of ethics is what we refer to as ethical dilemma. That is what we are going to be uh, dealing with generally at the end of the day. It's what we refer to as ethical dilemma. That as a professional accountant, you are supposed to adhere to the code of ethics. As a professional accountant, you are supposed to go by the books. As a professional accountant, you are supposed to uh, insist that the right thing will be done. Even if it means losing your job, go. Lose your job. God will take care of you. Allah will take care of you. Stand on your toes. Even though these are what you are supposed to do, there are sometimes 
we, there is a saying in Chi, uh, in our local parlance, that is translated as uh, the soul is willing, but the but the body is weak, right? Like sun sun penso, honam emre, like the soul is willing. I mean, if it is for you alone, you will head, you will adhere to the code of ethics. But here you are. Your salary is on the line. Here you are. Your job is on the line. Here you are. People's job, your colleague's job is on the line. So that is the thing that you must understand. So you read the scenario, understand the issue. If there are any IFRSs, understand how the treatment is supposed to be as per the IFRSs. And ask yourself, what are the threats the person is exposed to? Link your threats to the code of ethics that are being breached. That is what results into what we refer to as ethical dilemma. Ethical dilemma. So technically, this is the first part of your question, where the examiner is going to be asking you, what are the ethical issues that you are faced with, that the accountant is faced with, that the professional is faced with in the scenario? That is the first part of the question. Then the second part of the question is where the examiner is going to be asking you, what are the actions that must be taken? But before I go there, let me drop this uh, to you. If you are doing advanced audit and assurance and also spending time to look at something like corporate reporting, one of the things that you must understand is that if you identify the ethical dilemma that is in the question, you must assess the significance of the ethical dilemma that has been identified. You must assess the significance of the dilemma that has been identified. Is this significant? Now, you must know this very well, especially if you are in the audit and assurance class, that is advanced audit and assurance class, you must understand the significance of the threat that has been identified. And then sometimes when you're in corporate reporting also, this is going to be there. Why is this important? Because the significance of the threat will determine the course of action that must be taken by the professional. The significance of the threat will determine the course of action that must be taken by the professional. Please note that the significance of the threat depends on a number of issues. Number one, the person involved in the issue. The person involved. Number two will also be the materiality of the issue. So if we are dealing with a CFO of the company or we are dealing with a, a, an engagement partner and the engagement partner falls in love with the CFO of the company, then that is very risky because the engagement partner is the final decision maker on the audit. So that is going to be significant. And the only way you can mitigate is or you can solve that threat is to eliminate <laughs> or remove that engagement partner or tell the engagement partner that, hey, 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 stop your romance, stop your lovitiating, love and let's do the audit. When we finish the audit, you can continue with, with, with your love issue or with your love story. But we, we, we must take a look at it. But then if the person is an accounting trainee, for instance, the person is an accounting trainee who is part of the audit, then because of the fact that the accounting trainee's work will be considered and looked at by the supervisor, it means that the, the significance of the accounting trainee falling in love with somebody may not be that high as when we are dealing with an engagement partner. So when we are dealing with significance of the ethical dilemma that has been identified in the issue, we must look at the personality involved. Who is involved? It is the person a decision maker or not a decision maker? Certainly, if the person is a decision maker, then the threat is going to be significant. But if the person is not a final decision maker and the person's work could be reviewed by another person else, then certainly we may say that the person's risk or the person's threat is not that significant. Then it, it brings me to the next one that has to do with the appropriate cause of action that must be taken generally, the appropriate cause of action. 
the appropriate cause of action. Now, one of the things that you need to understand is that, now I see some of you guys joining, you are welcome. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. Give us a thumbs up on the video if you are getting some value already. It really helps us so we can reach a lot of students. This is uh, how the YouTube and Facebook algorithm uses the video to push it so we can reach many people. So consider to give us a thumbs up on the video. It really, really helps us a lot. And also comment in the comment section for those of you who are joining on Facebook, any questions you have for me, and comment in the chat box for those of you joining us on YouTube, any questions you have for me. Subscribe to the channel also if you have not subscribed to the channel because all these help us so we can grow the community and reach a lot of students just like you so we can together make the world a better place. Because if you, are, if you excel, I excel, we are going to be better and it will reduce the issues that we have around. Now, I see some questions coming in. Let me take the questions real quick. Remember, this is the part three of Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants. In case you missed the part one, the part two, uh, you can check the description of this video on YouTube, then you can watch the whole uh, playback there. If you are listening to the audio version also, you can check the uh, podcast list and you'll be able to find those previous lectures uh, there. I see some people with some questions. Please comment in the chat box any questions you have for me. I want to hear from you guys. So comments, let me know. Uh, let me take some questions real quick. Let's see. Um, who do I have here? Canlon. Dixon said, waiting for lecture. Okay, we are here now. Sinclair Chutu said, hi, Inshira. Hello, Sinclair. I hope you're doing well. Eric said, I just, I joined late. Please get the topic being discussed. Uh, we are discussing ethics, ethical issues. Uh, Mamosa Mualua. Forgive me if I don't mention your name right, okay? Uh, from South Africa. Hello, Inshira. Very happy to join your guidance. Always a pleasure. Much love for South Africa. All to South Africa. Sankle said, from Zambia. Nice to join this lecture. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having, thanks for joining us on the stream. Please share the video in your various countries, in your various jurisdiction. We have over 600 videos on this channel over 600 videos covering various topics, various subjects. So consider sharing the channel. Let's reach a lot of students. Let's assist a lot of people so we can together make the world a better place. Another comment from Mulan Dualwa. Fresh. Forgive me if I don't mention your name right, okay? Hello, Inshira. Nice to join from Zambia. All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, Sikamba. I think that one is easier for me. Sikamba. Then Doreen Nyerinda said, watching from Zambia. Okay, so I mean, we have a lot of Zambians joining us today. Thanks very much, Guy. Sinclair, uh, Sikamba, and then uh, Nyerinda, thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure having you on the live stream. So give us a thumbs up on the video if you just joined. And also comment in the comment section any questions you have for me, something you want me to share my thought on. Please do put it in the comment section. We want to hear from you as we look at the final part of ethics. As we look at the final part of ethics uh, there. I'm seeing a comment coming in from Atu Tomford. He said, please, can you reduce your charges for your students to enable more students to join? Boss, the economy hard though. You are the best in the business. 200 Ghana cities be cool. Just a suggestion. Okay, Atu Tomford. Um, what do we do here and the fee we charge, I can guarantee you it's one of the, it's, it's the cheapest in the entire industry. I, I, I'm going to be frank with you because of what you get here. Okay, because your 390 Ghana cities per paper gives you access to join our live Zoom sessions. That's number one. Number two, you get access to our online study portal for the lecture videos. Number three, you get access to ebooks, question kits. Number four, you join our executive revision masterclass. You don't pay anything. You get access to our examination analysis document. You don't pay anything. And then most importantly, you'll be able to learn directly under my mentorship. Assignments are going to be given. I'm going to be having calls with students, both on a personal level and on a group level, providing them with the mentorship that they need in order for them to pass the examination. So if you look at the package, what is involved in all these, at just 390 Ghana cities, I can guarantee you 
it is the cheapest that we could have uh, charged at the end of the day. So, uh, Tom Ford, yeah, I understand the economy is hard, it's difficult, it's challenging, but we, 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 we feel that at 390, it's fairly uh, the lowest because of the value that we are bringing on board and then the kind of service that we render here on uh, our uh, platform. So, yeah, 200 Ghana cities will be too low for us, but uh, we, we will be able to uh, do that. I don't know if you are interested in enrolling in a course. Probably I can consider to give you some discounts if that is possible. So let me know if anybody wants to enroll in a course today, probably today, I could give you some discounts so you can enroll to study directly under my mentorship. Only exclusively live right now. Let me know in the chat box. Maybe you, are, you, you want to join our lectures, but you are a little bit caught on finance and uh, but you want to join a class, you want to study under my mentorship, uh, you want to be part of our community and, and really that I hold your hand so you prepare for the exams. Let me know in the chat box if it is something you are interested in and I could see if I can give some uh, discounts to you live on the call right now so, or on the live stream right now so you can enroll in our courses and study under my mentorship. Like I say always, it's important to really join a class and not do this on your own. So let me know in the chat box if somebody is down for that. Uh, we may consider to see if we can give a discount for you to be able to uh, join us today uh, on this live stream. After this live stream, it will not be available, but on this live stream. Joseph Mumbe said, good to be part. you great man. Remain blessed. Joseph Mumbi from Zambia. Well, I think we have a lot of love from Zambia today. And definitely my Ghanaian squad, don't take it personal. The Ghanaian people, you take it personal. Before you know it, my students are lashing me in class. But hey, much love to the Zambians as well today. We have a lot of them on the call, uh, on the live stream. And then you are still the best. What you are saying is true. Always a pleasure. It's really a privilege for me to be able to assist you guys and help students to be able to prepare for the exams. Thanks very much, Tom Ford, for such kind words. Uh, Joseph Mumbi said, I want to use join under your mentorship. Okay, Joseph, I don't know the course you are doing since you are in Zambia or the subject that you are writing. So you can send hi to us on the WhatsApp. Uh, the number is scrolling below the screen, 0501149296. And uh, send hi on WhatsApp. Let us know what the subject you are writing. And then let's see what we can do to assist you there. Okay, so let's go. Enough of the messages. Uh, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, so what are we saying? We are saying that our ethics questions are going to be based on scenario. They are going to be scenario-based questions, all right? Then if they are going to be based on scenario, they are going to be based on scenarios, number one, we need to understand the issue that is presented to us in the question. Number two, we need to understand whether there are certain IFRS issues that we have to deal with. Number uh, three, I'm oh, sorry, number, four, yeah, number three will be the threats that a person is exposed to in the question, then certainly number four, we link our threat to the code of ethics in that particular case. And that is what we refer to as the ethical dilemma. Then the next thing is that we need to assess the significant, the significant of the threat that a person is exposed to. So we need to understand the significance of the threat that a person in the question is exposed to in that particular case. Then we need to ask ourselves, what are the appropriate causes of action? So stay with me as I drop this part. Now, when it comes to the appropriate cause of action, There are a lot of things that can be done based on the scenario presented to us. Stay with me carefully on this one. There are a lot of things that can be done based on the scenario presented to us. 
But broadly, our appropriate course of action could include a number of issues. Number one will be for education. Number one will be education. Now, let me, okay, let me explain this very well. Education means comes from two sources. Either we are going to be reminding somebody or we are going to be informing them about something. So what does that mean? You know, let's say we go back to my scenario here, the CEO and the CFO issue. If, for instance, the CEO is also a chartered accountant, then as the CFO of the company, I expect him to know that IFRS 16 is guiding or is what guides the preparation of uh, or the recognition of leases. For that reason, I must remind the CEO the importance of preparing the financial statements by the application or in accordance with the uh, IFRS 16 and ensuring that we prepare financial statements that are faithfully representing the entity. So where the person involved with the other person has knowledge, knows about it, then what do we do? We remind the person. But if the person doesn't know about it in that particular case, then what is going to be happening is that we need to inform the person. So this is where, for instance, the CFO has to say that, hey, CEO, yeah, I understand that um, the loan of $25 million, we need it. I understand that when it comes, my salary will go up. I understand that with all this loan, you are likely to suck a lot of people. But may I suggest to you that when we prepare the financial statements against the IFRS 16, we will be presenting misleading financial statements. And I don't want to be part of that. So I'm sorry, I cannot do that. What are you trying to tell the person? You are educating the person the importance of preparing the financial statement in accordance with the IFRSs and also ensuring that you are preparing financial statements that possess or has the qualitative characteristics of preparation of financial statements. That is the first thing, education. We may have to remind somebody or inform somebody about the right thing being done or what is expected to be done. Now, sometimes when you educate the people, it's not going to work well so let's say for instance i tell my cf i tell my ceo that uh boss i'm sorry but imagine going to your ceo's office and then you're like uh boss i'm sorry but the, the, what you asked me to do in the financial statement is against the ifrs now what your boss your boss is likely to insult you or lambast you hey what the hell are you the one coming to teach me what i'm supposed to do when i chatted you were in pampas when I chatted, your mother was carrying you. When I chatted, you were a miserable boy walking around. How the hell will you come and tell me how to prepare financial statement? Sometimes you could have some of these in practice. But you've got to educate the person anyway. You are a professional. Remember, ultimately, as a professional accountant, when you are faced with an ethical dilemma, the professional accountant must insist that the right thing be done. That's the whole takeaway. So you must insist that the right thing be done irrespective of what's going on. You must insist. You should insist. So you, you remind the CEO that, hey, boss, uh, what are you telling me? I cannot do it. I'm sorry, but it's wrong. It will be preparing misleading financial statements. It's not the right thing that has to be done. If that is the case, you need to go to the next step, and that is to uh, try to talk to the. Give me a moment. I don't know, but it's like my screen is freeze a little bit. Yep. For some reason, my screen is uh, frozen a little bit. I don't know what's going on. Let's see. Give me a moment. Let me see if I can get my live stream uh, back. It's still blank. <laughs> Give me a moment. Let's see if I can get my sharing device up. I'm seeing some questions coming in. <laughs> I'm going to take them in a moment. So stay with me. 
Let's see. Okay, so as I try to bring up my device, let me take some of the statements here. Uh, Comfort, Adair Amma said, Inshira, would love to join strategic case study. Okay, so Comfort, send us high on WhatsApp. Like I said, this offer is going to be just on the live stream. So send us high on WhatsApp, um, and uh, you'll be given a discount to be able to enroll in the course if you're excited about it. That would be great. Winifred Adwa said, good evening, Ishira. God bless you. God bless you, Winifred. I'll see you in class. Jeremy Giros, good evening, live from Liberia. Thank you very much for joining us, Jeremy. I'll see you in class tomorrow. Um, Mamusa Mualua said, I have already registered the SEMA course. I'm in level one, and I would like to be under your mentorship. Okay, so send us high on WhatsApp. Send us high on WhatsApp. Let's see. Uh, what I can do. Uh, technically, our uh, we don't have structured courses for SIMA, but what is going to happen is that if you still want me to teach you, uh, that will be on a private basis. That will cost you a little bit much than it, joining our regular class because we don't have a regular session tailored for SIMA in that case. And then, Timothy said, Inshira, I'm interested in the discount. So what I know. Send us high on WhatsApp. Uh, you'll be assisted to be able to get a discount so you can join the class. Alex Gerardo said, uh, yes, I want to join from Tema. Yeah, Alex, you can study from Tema. Join us live on Zoom to, for the classes, and then you'll be able to watch the videos as well. So send us high on WhatsApp. You can see the number below your screen, 050-114-9296, 050-114-9296. So send us high on WhatsApp with your name, and the subjects, then we will give you a discount so that you'll be able to enroll in the course. We are in week five, but if you really uh, work hard, watch the playback of the videos, you'll be able to continue. Papa Owusu Yanj said, my friend and I are interested. Okay, so Papa Owusu, send us high on WhatsApp. Send us high on WhatsApp. Like I said, this offer is valid during this live stream. After this live stream, it's not going to be there again. Kleto said, Ishira, if the CEO of a company is dating a service personnel in the same company, what is the threat to the company? And what is also the code of ethics? That is... <laughs> uh, sorry, okay, Kletos. It's not that I'm laughing at your discounts. Okay? Uh, sorry, at your uh, comments, okay? It's just an interesting story for me. It's an interesting storyline. So uh, the way you ask the question, I'll, uh, let me just say, uh, from Oboase, he said, uh, what also, what the code of ethics that they, um, <laughs> now this is the thing, this is the deal. Um, the CEO is dating a service personnel. I mean, the service personnel is doing her service in the company, isn't it? And they are dating. Uh, it has nothing to do with financial statement preparation as per my thinking. So that will be outside our scope. And uh, I don't, I'm not the one to judge whether it's right or wrong because um, CEO, if the CEO is not married and the service personnel is also not married and they are dating and whatever, I mean, who, who determines what is right or wrong? So here... There is no serious issue, but you are asking what is the threat to the company. Really, what happens is that uh, when there are when companies allow a relationship to fester like that, what's going to happen is that if somebody is involved or you cut, you cut somebody involved in something, then the other person must also go. So it could lead to a lot of loss of job. Because what it then means is if the service personnel is doing something wrong, something that could affect the profitability of the company, something that could affect the uh, going concern of the company, the CEO may not have the courage to tell it or to say it. For that reason, it is not advisable to have those kind of relationships coming on. So, but then here, there is nothing ethical or unethical about it that we can talk about it depends on the company's policy if the company's policy is against it then it shouldn't go on but if the company doesn't have any policy about internal affairs internal relationship i mean
people are in love let them chill <laughs> okay let us so this one it's uh, based on company policy and other things but it's relationship it's relationship we, we've had people who say um work boss and employee relationship should not be encouraged and then we have other people say what the heck because i mean it's relationship people are in love allow them to enjoy so it depends it depends Kletos. it depends okay so vena said insurer i'm interested in discount send us high on whatsapp vena send me high on whatsapp add your name uh uh and then let's know about that so let's uh send her on whatsapp with the subject you are writing then we can see what discounts we can give you then you can enroll in the course isaac idioba said say i need a discount too isaac okay so let me know send her on whatsapp uh let's see what we can do for you timothy said kletos this one has nothing to do with the account <laughs> You know, see, so that is the issue there. That is the issue there. Let's see if I can um, screen. I don't know what's wrong with my server right now, and it's not sharing again. Okay, let's see. It's coming up. Issue a premium. Come on, I don't have time. You good? Please contact your network administrator. The portal. Um, I don't know for some reason my server for sharing the screen is preventing me from doing that. I don't know what's going on right now. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, maybe I'll just have to talk over because. My screen sharing says it will, it won't continue. So maybe I just have to share. Uh, I just have to talk over as I try to connect. So like we are saying, the appropriate course of action, number one is through education. It's through education. So at education, we say you can remind the person if the person is knowledgeable, the person is also a fellow accountant, a fellow chartered accountant, then you remind the person. But if the person knows nothing, the person is not a fellow chartered accountant, then certainly you need to inform the person. Then the second thing that you also do is to obtain an advice from the audit committee. Okay? So you obtain advice from the audit committee. If they have one in the company, or you put a formal letter to the board of the company to request for explanation on the treatment of the item or the challenge that you are encountering as an accountant in that particular case. So that is the second thing that you can do. You speak with the uh, audit committee, if the company has one, and tell them about the issue that is happening. So for instance, the scenario that I'm bringing up, that the CEO is telling the CFO not to recognize the lease as both financial lease and operating lease, sorry, not as current liability and non-current liability, you write to the audit committee. What, what's your judgment? What should be the best treatment of this? If there is no audit committee, maybe you have to write formally to the board because this is material. Okay? If leases are supposed to be recognized as um, your friend is saying current and non-current and you don't do that, it's material. The financial statement is going to be really, really misrepresented. Really misrepresented. So we have to let the uh, board know about this very well because and take some advice from them on what is best for us to do in that case i don't know what's wrong with my server right now i'm seeing a comment coming in let's see how much can advanced audit reporting how much can advanced financial reporting here in zambia doing my last level for ca zambia uh i think our main course uh is 390 ghana cities maybe that could be about fifty dollars ish or so or forty dollars something like that so you can check 390 ghana cities uh in that case and you'll be able to uh, get that i 
I don't know, for some reason, my server doesn't want to share my screen again. Okay. Uh, Akawuba Solomon said, Good evening, sir. I want a copy of your taxation book. Uh, please send her on WhatsApp 050 It is 120 Ghana cities, and uh, you'll be able to get a copy there. Give me a moment. So we have the advanced taxation, which is also for principles of taxation student. It's 120 Ghana cities. When you buy this book, you get access to my newsletter, which is uh, a PDF file for the key issues, the key principles that you have to focus on to pass the examination. Then we also have the public sector book available. That is also 120 Ghana cities. Wherever you are located, you can uh, request and we'll be able to uh, do the delivery for you in that particular case. So these two books are available. Uh, we are hoping that our corporate reporting and financial reporting book will be available in Ghana pretty soon. We are having some challenges with it, but we are hoping that it will be available pretty soon so that students can get access to it. But so far, we have these two available that you can get access to if you are interested uh, in them. Abdullah, uh, Bapa said, thanks a lot and God bless you. God bless you too, Abdullah. Thanks for joining us on the live stream. Um, I don't know, for some reason, my screen doesn't want to share again. Okay? I don't know, but there's a question I want us to solve. And now, okay, so let me do this. Let me do this. So I'm, I'm going to talk over. Okay, I'm just going to talk over, but I'm not going to share my screen. So let's continue. So number one, you educate the person. Either you remind or you inform the person. Number two, you obtain advice from the audit committee if the company has one, or you write formally to the board. You write formally to the board. And that is very, very important in that particular case. Then number three is sometimes you can obtain advice from a responsible party outside. Now, sometimes if you write to the board or you go to the audit committee, the response may not be what you are expecting because the CEO and the audit committee, they could be together and the board, they could be together. So it is likely that we are not going to be having uh, a, a thorough issue. So if the issue is material, then probably you can uh, go to the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana to obtain some guidelines on how such things should be dealt with or the ethical dilemma or the ethical issue you are faced with what should be the appropriate course of action? So sometimes you can obtain an advice guideline from the Institute of Chartered Accountant or from the Association of Certified Chartered Accountant, the ACCA. So any responsible party, there are committees available, there are responsible parties available where you can go there and share your ethical situation with them. Then they will advise you, do this, do that, do that. So number one, educate. Number two, you obtain advice from the audit committee if there is one, or you write formally to the board. Number three, you obtain advice from an external responsible party. It could be a regulatory authority, like the IC or ACC, whatever it is, and you'll be given the guidelines as per the profession so that you can, uh, that will, you can follow to achieve your goals or to be able to reduce the threat. Then number four is the last result resignation. If you realize that whatever has been suggested, as per your knowledge, you know what you're supposed to do, but it's still not being done. If the issue is really, really material, then what you have to do is to resign. Like I told you in the beginning, as a professional accountant, when you are faced with an ethical dilemma, one thing and one thing only must you stand on, and that is to insist that the right thing be done. Whether you are threatened that you will lose your job, or you are threatened that you will be killed, or you are threatened that you are being blackmailed, or you are threatened that your salary will be reduced, whatever threat it is that you are, you are facing, you must insist at all costs that the right thing is done. The reason, if you can't insist that the right thing is done, then you resign. Then you resign. Because if you uh, follow through and do the wrong thing, you may expose yourself to what is called professional liability. And your license could be seized or revoked 
by the Institute of Chartered Accountants or the Association of Certified Chartered Accountants. You could be processed for court. It could lead to imprisonment and loss of fines and all that. Uh, this part of the world in Africa, we don't really see some of these things, but in America, in Europe, and in Asia, some of these things are really prevalent there in that case. I mean, in this part of the world, we are now uh, growing a little bit. For instance, in Ghana, the banking crisis, I mean, if it was in some countries, it has been stated that um, many people would have been in jail, would have been jailed by now uh, from their situation. But then, you know, uh, people were fined, uh, people's licenses were revoked, da 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 da. And the issue is still, some of the issues are still in court, and the court is yet to decide on them. So we are developing ethically. Nonetheless, you must ensure that you adhere to the code of ethics. So usually when it comes to the appropriate cause of action, these are the things that we can do in that case. Any questions, please? Any questions? So you educate, obtain advice from the audit committee or recommendation, you write formally to the board. Then you need to also uh, obtain an advice or recommendation from an external responsible party. And then number four, if none of these things can work, Work, and still the threat is significant, you resign or you decline from the assignment generally in that particular case. Let me know any questions for me. I see some questions coming on. Let's see if I can take them up real quick. John Nyame said, hi, Shira. Please, who is the lady in front of your book? She will be tempting us when you... <laughs> Why would she be tempting you? Eh, John? Focus and learn. Focus and learn. Don't look at the lady on the cover of the book. Just learn and pass your exams. Give us a thumbs up on the video, guys. And uh, if there are any questions, please put it in the chat for me. Isaac Ofori said, hi. Hello, Isaac. Isaac said, you are doing a great work. Thank you very much, Isaac. Oh, Nyame, you are laughing after saying that. Sinclair said, what is the exchange rate of Ghana City to the dollar? Uh, Sinclair, just Google that. You could just Google. Let me just see. Um, 390 Ghana cities, dollar. Now that the dollar is dancing with the Ghana cities, hey, this country, they're in trouble. Okay, $61. Okay, so per my exchange rate right now on Google, is $61, Sinclair. So you can check in your country before you make payments, okay? So you can just Google that and check. Currently, it's $61 as per my my exchange rate that I saw on Google. Solomon said, please, I want to know, how do I update a fixed asset register? You update a fixed asset register if the entity has sold, has bought some assets, or has disposed of some assets at the end of the day. So if there is anything like that, then possibly we could uh, look at it there. How can we purchase your book or material from Nigeria? Uh, you can try to buy it on Amazon uh, and see if it will be uh, looked at. Or better still, I don't know, we could arrange delivery uh, from Ghana to Nigeria using either DHL or whatever. It could be checked to see the cost that is involved. So send us high on WhatsApp. You can see the number below your screen. Uh, send us high on WhatsApp. We can see if it is possible, if it will be cheaper for us to use DHL from Ghana to Nigeria, or it'll be cheaper for you to rather buy it on Amazon and get it to Nigeria, which is, which I think Ghana to Nigeria will be cheaper than getting it from Amazon UK or Amazon US to Nigeria. So send us high on WhatsApp. We could arrange uh, for that for you. Isaac said, great work. God richly blessed you. Amen. God bless you too, Isaac. Uh, Ahmed, Amido said, Hi, I am in Gambia. How can I get your book? Uh, you, can, you can go to Amazon. If you go to Amazon, search for Insurer Premium, the same name on this channel. You, could, you will see all my books. And you can either buy the Kindle version so that you can read it using the, uh, the Kindle application for uh, iOS or Android. Or you can get the hardcover uh, directly shipped to you uh, in Gambia. So you can visit Amazon and get access to our books there you can visit amazon and get access to our books there any questions please any questions any questions any questions any questions for me please any questions for me please
So that is the issue about how we answer ethic questions. Like I said, I wanted us to take a question, but unfortunately my uh, screen sharing is not uh, supporting me from my iPad. I don't know what's wrong with, uh, I think the server is giving me some feedback that uh, I should check the administrator or whatever. So my technical team will check that for me after my live stream. So unfortunately, I will not be able to solve the question with you. I will see if tomorrow we can solve that because tomorrow I wanted to do anything. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on the ethics, but if that is the case, we could do the question tomorrow because answering the question is very, very critical. So what is the takeaway? What is the takeaway? The takeaway here is this. When answering ethics questions, when answering ethics question, this is what you need to do. Read the scenario. One, read the scenario thoroughly. Two, identify the issues in the scenario. Three, ask yourself, are there, are there any accounting issues that I have to think about? Four, identify the threats that the professional accountant is faced with. Five, link the threat that the professional accountant is faced with the code of ethics. And that results into what is called uh, ethical dilemma. Then ask yourself, what is the significance of the threats, of the risks that has been identified? That is the ethical dilemma. Like I said, the significance depends on two things. The personality of the person involved and then the materiality of the issue. The personality involved and the materiality of the issue. Then and the last one is, what is the appropriate course that you're supposed to take? Like I said, there are a lot of courses of action that you can take, but education, reminding or informing people, writing to the audit committee, if something like that is available or the board, we go for it. And then we seek recommendation or advice, advice from an external responsible party. It could be the ICA, the ACCA, the SEMA to discuss the professional issue with them and they can recommend to you what exactly you're supposed to do. And then if that doesn't work and the thing is still material, then the last resource is for you to decline the engagement from the perspective of auditors or resign from your employment from the perspective of an accountant or if you are in an employment of the company. That is the takeaway I want you to have from this lecture today. Any questions, please? Any questions, please? Any questions? Abdullah said, you are truly a blessing to humanity. In fact, I love you a lot, brother. I love you too, Abdullah. Thanks very much for such kind words. Uh, Kofi Numo said, you can restart your machine. Yeah, I think so. But if I restart, that means the live stream is going to stop because uh, the issue is both. I don't know whether it is the program on my iPad or the program on the on the laptop. So I need to restart the two devices. But if I do that, that means my live stream is ending. So I'll do that after the live stream to see if it is fixed before our technical team will come and look at it for me. So thank you very much for that. Fatah appearing in Gideon said, Hey, Shira, God bless you for the great work. My question is, what is the cost combination for level two? Okay, cost combination for level two, public sector accounting and finance and um, financial reporting is a great combination. Uh, financial management and management accounting uh, is a great combination that you can go in for in that case. So I don't know what subject you are left. Could be great combinations that you can go in for in that case. So that could be a great combination to go in for. Um, Fata, Fata, Apienin, Godwin. Sorry, Gideon. <laughs> not Godwin, Gideon, Fata Apieni Gideon. Okay, so like I mentioned, um, I am giving a special discount out for people who want to study under my mentorship. You have not joined any class yet, but you really want to study under my mentorship, special discount. Uh, I'm just seeing that uh, some people have sent hi on WhatsApp already. And uh, like I said, it's just available on this live stream. So when I end this live stream, the people who have sent their messages will be able to give them some discount off so you can enroll in the course. Now, the course is 390 Ghana cities. So we will see if we can give you some uh, discount off so that you can 
uh, enroll and study under my mentorship for the April 2022 examination. So thank you very much, guys. I'm going to be ending here. Um, tomorrow, God willing, I'm going to be coming your way again. Then we will take the question on ethics. So meaning tomorrow I will still look at ethics a little bit. Then I will discuss some other issues with you. Please follow me on Instagram if you are not following me because we post the meeting details there and the time and everything there so you can follow me on Instagram. It's 4.30 p.m. GMT. 4.30 p.m. GMT. Amido, Amido, you are asking that what time? It's 4.30 p.m. GMT. So you can follow me on Instagram. Details will be posted there so you can get a feedback on what exactly you need to do in that case. So thank you very much, guys, for uh, joining us. Fatah, Gideon, Isaac, Idioba, Emos Etumi, Philip Minta, Ato Tom Ford, Eric Dogan, Eric Ahia Deki, Humphrey, uh, and all of you guys, thanks for the thumbs up and the love. Appreciate it. And for those of you who are giving us a thumbs up also on YouTube, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much because that is what helps us to grow this community, to reach a lot of students, to be able to assist a lot of people. So I will catch you same time tomorrow as we continue and try to conclude on ethics, and then we'll discuss something else as we continue with our discussion. Remember, week five is almost done. We are left with seven weeks for the ICA April 22 examination. But I believe that if you put in the work, you put in the effort, you put in the sacrifices, and you do whatever it is that you have to do legitimately, you will be in a better position to be able to pass the examination. So till we meet again tomorrow at 4.30 p.m., stay safe and stay blessed. Bye-bye.